Today's grade six practice problems review is on unit four, lesson 15, the volume of prisms. And we're still using our fractions here. So in problem one, a pool in the shape of rectangular prism is being filled with water. The length and width of the pool is 24 feet and 15 feet. If the height of the water in the pool is one and one third feet, what is the volume of the water in cubic feet? Well, for rectangular prisms, and really any prism, we can find the volume to be the area of the base times the height. Well, the base is length times width, and that's going to be our 24 times 15, which gets us 360, times our height, which is 1 and a third. 360 is 360 over 1. 1 and a third is 4 thirds. You can cross simplify here by taking a 3 out of both the 360 and the 3, divide the 3. You get 120 and 1. And then lastly, 120 times 4 is 480, and 1 times 1 is 1. So our answer is 480 cubic feet. Question 2 is a complicated one. A rectangular prism measures 2 and 2 fifths inches by 3 and a fifth inches by 2 inches. Priya said it takes more cubes with edge length 2 fifth inch than cubes with edge length 1 fifth to pack the prism. Do you agree? Well, I don't. I strongly disagree. If a cube has an edge length of 2 fifths, that's going to be bigger than the edge length of 1 fifth. So since 2 fifths is bigger than 1 fifth, it would take less of the 2 fifths inch cubes than 1 fifth. I mean, much less. Now, this looks like a lot of stuff going on here, but if you break it down into the individual questions, it's really not too terribly difficult for number two. How many cubes with edge length 1 fifth inch fit in the prism? Show your reasoning. We're basically taking our edge lengths here, 2 and 2 fifths, 3 and a fifth, and 2, and dividing each of those by one-fifth to see how many of those cubes will line up along these sides. And once I know how many cubes will long, line up along these sides, I can multiply. So it's a bunch of division questions. Two and two-fifths divided by one-fifth, which is twelve-fifths divided by one-fifth. Keep, change, flip a ruse, cross simplify, you get twelve. For the other side here, 3 and a fifth divided by 1 fifth. 3 and a fifth is equivalent to 16 fifths divided by 1 fifth. Keep, change, flip a ruse, cross simplify, you get 16. And then, lastly, you have the 2. So 2 divided by 1 fifth. You've got uh, 2 over 1 divided by 1 fifth. Keep, change, flip. Nothing to cross simplify here. You just get 2 times 5 is 10. And so this side here that's 2 and 2 fifths takes up 12 cubes. This side that's 3 and a fifth has 16 cubes. This side that's 2 takes up 10 cubes of these 1 fifth inch cubes. Then, if this is 12, this is 16, and this is 10, multiply those together. 12 times 16 times 10 is 1,920 cubes, and that's a lot. So... Question three, explain how you can use your answer in the previous question, 1,920, to find the volume of the prism in cubic inches. Well, if we find the volume of each individual cube, we can do that by taking 1 fifth times 1 fifth times 1 fifth to get 1 1 25th. If the total number of cubes numbered 1,920 and each of those cubes had a volume of 1 1 25th, you can multiply out. Uh, to find out what the volume is. I cross simplified here by dividing by 5, and you get 384 twenty fifths. And I know we talk in class about how you don't necessarily need to change these from improper to mixed. Uh, if you were, you'd get 15 and 9 twenty fifths cubic inches, um, but either way, improper or mixed. And so while it looks like there's a lot going on, if you break it down into the individual pieces here, going, okay, this is 12, this is 16, this is 10, by dividing these out, it's really a little bit of work, but you get a nice result. Now, as we continue on with our triangles, remember, when you're looking for area of triangles, you're looking lock in on the right angle. You have to lock in on right angles here. Um, it's, it's just so, so important here. Um, right there, see? Right there, there's a right angle. And so, what is the area? Well, you've got this one side here that's three-fourths, this one side here that's one, 
And so they meet together here at this right angle, right there, see? So we can take um, area equals one half base times height here. Area equals one half times the three fourths times the one. And one times three times one is three. Two times four times one is eight because one is one over one. So you get three eighths cubic centimeters. That's the area. Now, once you know the area, you can find this other side because here's the other right angle. They're saying, all right, if the base is 5 fourths, what's this height? Well, our formula doesn't change. It's still area equals 1 half times the base times the height. The thing is, now you know the area, and now you know the base. We're looking for the height. We're looking to solve for the height. The height's right there, right? <laughs> so, 1 half, I'm sorry, 1 half times 5 fourths is 5 eighths. And if you're looking for this H now, you need to divide 3 eighths divided by 5 eighths. Keep, change, flip, cross simplify. You get 3 fifths centimeters for this height. Now another rectangular prism question, in fact, to give their animals essential minerals and nutrients, farmers and ranchers often have a block of salt called salt lick available for their animals to lick. A rancher is ordering a box of cube-shaped salt licks. The edge lengths of each salt licks are 5 twelfths of a foot. Is the volume of one salt lick greater or less than one cubic foot? Explain your reasoning. Well, it's going to be much less than. Um, you know, a cube in any really rectangular prism, it's going to be length times width times height. And just to prove it, 5 twelfths times 5 twelfths times 5 twelfths is 125, uh, 1,720 eighths cubic foot. So it's, it, it's much smaller um, than a cubic foot. Now, very similar to, I believe it was question two on this assignment, the box that contains the salt lick, so the box we're packing these things into, is one and a fourth feet by one and two thirds feet by five sixths of a foot. How many cubes of salt lick fit in the box? Explain or show your reasoning. And so once again, we have this box, we're going to be putting in these little things of salt lick here but how many can fit in? Well, for this one and one-fourth side, we're going to have to take one and one-fourth and divide it by the five-twelfths that each of these cube, um, the pieces of salt edge lengths are. And so one and one-fourth divided by five-twelfths becomes our problem. One and a fourth is five-fourths. Keep, change, flip, you get three. And the same thing throughout here um, for the other two. You have one and two thirds divided by five twelfths. You keep change flip, you get four. You have five sixths divided by five twelfths. You have keep change flip, simplify, and you get two. And so you can fit three along this side, four along this side, two going up. Three times four times two is 24 cubes. How many groups of one third inch are in three fourths inches? Well, take three fourths and divide by one third. Keep, change, Flip, you get nine-fourths, which is equivalent to two and a fourth. Question two is a little bit different in this problem. How many inches are in one, two, one? That. How many inches are in one and two-fifths groups of one and two-thirds inches? Well, you have one and two-fifths groups. Each one of them is one and two-thirds inches. So just multiply them together. You get seven-fifths times five-thirds, cross-simplify, seven-thirds inches are in these groups here, and that's also simplified to two and a third. And our last question brings us back to the table, but of course we have fractions. Here's a table that shows the ratio of flour to water in an art paste. Complete the table with values and equivalent ratios. And so as we go from one down to four, we're multiplying by four, so take a half times four is two. I'm looking and going, okay, how do I get from two to three? Well, I multiply by one and a half. And so four times one and a half is six. The other way, looking at this now, you could have also gone, well, a half times six is three, so one times six is six. And then as I'm looking to get to a half now, I'm coming back up at this one going, okay, one times a half is a half. A half times a half is a fourth. And that is it for this grade six practice problems review on unit four, lesson 15, volume of prisms with a lot of fractions.
Good luck.